In this short sequence of videos we're going to be looking at processing our data, starting with the Analyze window. Now by data processing we include quantification and output of analysis points, including line profiles, display and output of wave scans, which includes peaking and PHA plots, and the display and output of annotated electron images. Now obviously you can do this online on your computer connected to your EPMA, uh, but it can also be carried out offline on any compatible PC by downloading Probe from EPMA free from this website. Whenever you launch Probe for EPMA, even with an offline installation, you're asked whether you want to interface the microprobe hardware or not. Now, if you're doing just offline processing, we'll select no. However, the reason you can select yes on an offline PC is because Probe for EPMA is perfectly capable of simulating connection to an EPMA. And in fact, a lot of these tutorial videos have been recorded using a combination of real data and a simulated EPMA. In this video, though, we're just going to select no, so we can see what it looks like when we're doing offline processing. Let's open our example uh, database. And we'll see that the acquire and automate uh, buttons are greyed out because there's no instrument to set up any acquisitions on. However, the analyze and plot buttons are active. And we're going to concentrate on the analyze button in this video. Now when we click on this we can uh, investigate standards, unknowns, wave scans or just all samples. We're going to look at our unknowns. And we have a list of samples here. Now one of the samples has an asterisk against it and this means there's no data with that sample. Now if you've got a number of setups uh, and uh, samples with quite a lot of them with no data actually assigned to them, you can end up with quite an untidy list. But we can tidy that up by simply checking the box display samples with data and that takes out all the samples which don't have any data assigned to them. Another thing we can do to speed things up and make things a bit tidier is every time we do a quantification or display data in this window it's also mirrored in the log window. But we can prevent that just by seeing, uh, checking the box, do not output to log. Now if we double click on any of these, it gives us a summary of the raw data. So this is the peak minus background corrected counts per second per nanoamp of each of the measured elements, uh, along with a measurement of the beam current. Uh, and then if we look at the minimum and the maximum, uh, that'll be the start and finish beam current measurements. On the other hand, if we click Analyze and allow it to do the calculation, it'll run through the data and give us our uh, weight percent uh, values uh, as average with the standard deviation and also for each of our analysis points uh, assigned to this sample. Now you'll notice here that we've got the oxides listed and this has been set in our calculation options. And we can change a number of things here. So we can display the results as oxides. So if we unselect that and click OK, and I hit Analyze again, we're now presented with the data with weight percent element, including oxygen as a separate element. Now if we wanted to do that for all of the samples, so if we now move to the next sample and click Analyze, it reverts to displaying these as oxides because each of the calculation options we've selected there is uh, assigned to each of the samples separately. But what we can do is we can block select, go to the calculation options and uh, uncheck display results as oxides and now that'll be assigned to all of the samples. So if we check on number two and click analyze that now comes out as elemental percent. And we could do lots of other useful things. So for example, if we calculate atomic uh, ratios and then we wanted to calculate uh, based on eight atoms of oxygen uh, to see what our uh, mineral formulas would look like. And we now check analyze. we're now given the uh, atomic ratios relative to oxygen 8. So we've got uh, 
three atoms of silicon, uh, a little less than uh, one of aluminium. So it looks like this is close to an SI, ALSI308 formula. So I'll turn that off just now. Now something else we can do is we can uh, check what the conditions were that the sample was analysed at. Obviously we can't change any of these because these were the conditions that were used uh, during acquisition. But if we go to the elements in cations, we can see that there's a combination of mean atomic number and linear and exponential backgrounds. Now with the mean atomic number backgrounds, if we uh, check on that one, uh, we can see we've got no options to change anything because this won't have been uh, won't have had any backgrounds measured. But if we go to, for example, potassium, which was me measured with backgrounds, we can see that we've got the options to actually change uh, what we do with that measured background data. The conventional is just a linear extrapolation between the backgrounds, but we can apply uh, exponential, use the high only, the low only, the average of the two backgrounds, or uh, the high with a slope or the low with a slope. And if we have multi-point backgrounds uh, acquired, we can change which of those backgrounds we use. So that's quite useful for being able to post-process our data and change a few settings. If we go to the standard assignments, uh, we can change which standard is being used, but we can also see that there's some interfering elements have been uh, assigned. So for magnesium, there's an interference with calcium, and we're using uh, calcium phosphate uh, to correct for that. And one of the benefits of Probe Pre-PMA, because the ethos of the software is to measure everything and record everything you've measured, we can change which of the interfering standards we use because we'll have measured magnesium on all of the standards, which is a very powerful thing to be able to do. You can also uh, change the name of uh, the sample and add a description if you want. There's various options for uh, combining or separating out uh, samples, uh, but those will be covered in uh, more advanced videos. Now if we block select all of the samples, we could analyze all of these in turn, but it will literally flash through all of them. Uh, so if I just select the first three and show you what that looks like. See at the bottom it's doing all the calculations. So it gives us the first sample, and then immediately the second sample, and the third sample which is not particularly useful if you want to uh, look at each of the samples in turn. However, we check pause between samples and we do that again. It'll calculate the first one and then it'll stop. And down here in the right hand bottom right hand corner you'll see that the next is flashing. So we can uh, take our time looking at these values then click the next. It'll then do the next one. and then finally the third. So have a play with uh, what you can do with the calculation options and with your, your various samples. Uh, and in the next video we'll look at uh, how we output the data.